Okay, so uh, this is another video on conditional expected values for continuous random variables. Now, we saw in the previous video that expressing this concept here, and I'll write it out in full, this concept of the probability of this inverse image of the interval x to x plus delta x uh, intersect this event E. Uh, was quite a difficult thing to express in terms of the probability density function of the random variable big X, basically. So, uh, in this video, what we're going to see is how, if you condition on the value of a second random variable, then the formulas basically become nicer. So, what we're going to imagine having is an abstract probability space with a joint random variable defined on it. So we're going to have a joint random variable x, y defined on it, which maps you basically, instead of mapping you just onto r values, real values, it maps you onto an ordered pair of real numbers instead of just a single real number. So it maps you onto points in R2. And let's say it has some joint probability density function, little f of x, y as a function of little x, little y, which basically, if we draw out R2 here, if you've got a point little x, little y here, then that will, if you take a little box here of, uh, let's say, side lengths delta x and delta y, then if you want to know the probability, um, the probability that the uh, random variable, the joint random variable, will ascribe values in that little box. So basically, this little box is some point. It's a, a subset of this. It's an event in here. If we want to know the probability of that, what we mean because the whole notion of a random variable is that basically the, this structure of this probability space mirrors the structure of this probability space. What we really mean is the inverse image, if you like, of that uh, little square. So um, how would I write that? The inverse image of this function x joint y, so I'll put them like that, inverse image of this box. And the way you would write the box is you'd write the box as um, x to x plus delta x cross-producted with y, uh, well, Cartesian product is rather, uh, with y to y plus delta y. So basically what it says, that is this set here, this Cartesian product is the set of all ordered pairs where the first value is drawn from the interval x to x plus delta x and the second value in the ordered pair is drawn from y to, to y plus delta y. So it basically says take the inverse image of this little box here, uh, let's say this is this green blob here, what's the probability of that in this original probability space? That's what the probability of this green box is. And basically if you make the side lengths delta x and delta y very small, then the probability of uh, this pre-image of this green box, this green blob, is actually going to, should actually equal the joint probability density function evaluated at the point little x, little y, times delta x, delta y. So that's again the concept of probability density function, that it's not the probability, it's what you have to multiply by some area to get probability. Okay, uh, and of course this only converges on being true as delta x and delta y converge on zero, but if they're very, very small, then this is a good approximation. So I should probably put approximately equal to there. Okay, uh, so what's very nice about doing uh, conditional expectation on these random variables is that now we've got two of these. What we can do is we can condition on knowing the value of y. So what we can try and do is we can say, okay, let's say y is set. So that big y equals some constant k. So basically now what I'm saying is, okay, select your y value as k. So the only values I'm now interested in are these values, this pink line. So where the x value varies, but the y value doesn't vary. So it, you can have any x value you like, but the y value is set. So that is this pink uh, subset of R2. Now that has a corresponding pre-image in here, which I'll just draw some blob here. Okay, so that is the event back in this probability space that the y value is equal to k. So basically, what we can now do is say that's condition on knowing on that, basically, on that event. So we're going to say we're going to condition on the value on the value of y. So we're going to say y is equal to k. And what we now what can still vary is the x value. So we're going to find what is x, what is the probability density function of x conditional on y is equal in k. So I shouldn't have actually drawn that yet, because what I'm doing is I'm just removing that event here. I'm removing that blob, that pink blob, all the points which were mapped onto a, uh, a point in R2 that lies on this pink line. And I'm now saying, okay, restrict this uh, 
this random variable onto just this. But of course, uh, you, it's not a bivariate random variable anymore. There's no point on considering this as a bivariate random variable because the k value is fixed. So you might as well just consider this, the x random variable, uh, given that y is equal to k. So that's what the way you would notate that, because y is fixed now. So there's no point on considering this a bivariate random variable anymore, because the only value that's changing is x. So we might as well consider it as a, uh, a, um, a univariate random variable, so a single random variable. So this is still going to map you onto R, and basically what we now would like to know is what's the probability density function for this random variable. It's going to take every value in this pink set and it's going to ascribe it some point on this line, and what we would like to know is what's the x value of that point. Okay, so that's what this random variable is going to ascribe every point, and what we would like to know is what is the probability density function of this random variable x, given that y is equal to k as a function of little x. Well, um, the way that we would work this out is we'd say, okay, uh, imagine taking um, some... The way the probability density function is defined is that its value at some point little x, if you take an interval x to x plus delta x and you multiply the probability density function evaluated at x by the length of the interval delta x, then that should approximately equal this value here should approximately equal the probability that you are within that interval x to x plus delta x, basically. Okay, now what is the probability that you're within that interval x to x plus delta x? Uh, well, uh, that's going to be the pre-image of that in here, and we want to condition. We want basically the pre-image of this interval x to x plus delta x in here. Okay, now uh, we can try and find uh, what that probability of what the probability of that is in this old probability space here. So we can try and find that uh, from our knowledge of the probability density function on the whole of uh, R2, basically. So this pre-image here goes back into the whole probability space. So this subset of points which were mapped onto a value of x between x and x plus delta x, they now correspond, basically, uh, to uh, a subset in this um, in this set of all points which were mapped onto a constant y value, i.e. the y value y is equal to k. That has a corresponding pre-image in, in the whole probability space before we took it out. And then that, finally, has some point over here, basically. So that is effectively x, and this is x plus delta x, basically. And obviously, they lie on the uh, line y is equal to k. So what we can try and do is find the probability of this orange interval back here, and then all we need to divide it by, so we need to take the probability of the orange interval back here, and then what we need to divide it by is the probability of the pink line. Now, the pink line was actually the line that y is equal to k. For this exercise, what we need to do is imagine giving it a little, a little length, basically. So we're going to give it, we're going to make it we're going to make it not infinitesimally thick, basically. We're going to give it an actual length just to just uh, so that we can actually use this probability density function here. Of course, we'll let, uh, let's put delta k there. So k plus delta k. So we're thickening up that pink line slightly. But we'll let, of course, delta k uh, converge on zero and everything will be nice, basically. Okay, uh, so basically what we can then imagine doing is saying we want the probability of this little orange square there. So that's why we had to do that, why we had to bump up that line from being just a line to being uh, a tiny little strip rather than just a line. Uh, uh, so that we could use this probability density function. So what is the probability that you're within that little orange interval now, or that little orange square, which is the probability density function of x, y, evaluated at little x and k, so that's, your, that's what this point is here, that's the value little x, k, and then we, all we have to do is times it by delta x, and then times it by delta k. And then, because that gives us the probability of this orange interval, basically, the pre-image of this orange interval, in this entire probability space, so in this entire probability space here, what we want to do is condition on pink having happened. So what we then need to do is divide through by the probability of pink. Now, the probability we're viewing pink as being this tiny little strip now of width uh, delta k. So the probability of, um, of that strip uh, that um, you are 
yeah, the, of width delta k is basically the marginal distribution of y evaluated at k times delta k. So remember what the, marg the definition of the marginal distribution is. It's the probability density function defined on little y. So, okay, um, so the, I'm running out of space, so let's go over onto the other side. So basically, the marginal probability density function of y as a function of uh, as a function of let's just say of little y is equal to if I draw out the picture of R two again. So here is R two, and remember that we have the joint probability density function defined on here, which ascribes to every point um, the probability density function at that point. So what it means is if you take a little square of side lengths delta x and delta y, then the probability of that little square is effectively the probability density function multiplied by the area of that square. Now, the marginal PDF of this random variable big Y as a function of little y is effectively the integral from negative infinity to infinity of the joint PDF, x, y, evaluated at little x, little y, uh, dx. And let me explain why. Because what does this mean? This means what is the probability that you have a certain y value? So it says, uh, well, what is the probability density function that you have a certain y value? So if we times this by some delta y, so let's times this by some delta y, then that should be the probability that your y value is within a little strip like this. So let's say um, f evaluate it at y to y plus delta y. So basically what that means, the probability density function of the random variable big Y evaluated at little y times delta y means the probability of a strip um, which is the, the strip of all points that have a y value little y and that strip needs to have interval delta, that width delta y. So basically it means what is the probability of this strip here? Okay, now if you want to calculate that, um, the way to do it would be to um, integrate uh, the um, you integrate the joint PDF. The pro what we're asking is what's the probability of that pink strip? If we want to work that out, what we need to do is integrate the joint PDF over this pink region. Now, if delta y is very, very small, then basically your you, this joint PDF value is not going to change that much because you're changing y by so little. So what you can approximate it by is you can say, okay, integrate uh, from negative infinity to infinity the joint PDF uh, evaluate at little x, little y, dx, basically. So you plug in the value of y you're interested in. So whatever this value of y is, you plug that into the PDF. That's fixed. You let x vary over negative infinity to infinity. And basically, that integrates this PDF along this line here, the bottom line of this strip. And if delta y is very, very small, then you can view this integral as being constant over the width of this uh, strip, basically. And the uh, probability that you're with the integral of this um, over of the P joint PDF over this pink strip basically becomes this value, which is the integral over this bottom line, just times by the width of the strip, so times by delta y. Okay. Right, so then what you do is you just cancel the delta y from both sides and get that the marginal PDF evaluated at little y is just the integral from negative infinity to infinity of the joint PDF evaluated at little x, little y, dx. Okay, so that is how um, you... Um, that's the, just the concept of the joint PDF. So if you want the probability of that pink little strip here of uh, width delta k, then basically it's this, um, the way that you would calculate it is exactly the same as I've just said. Uh, you would take the joint PDF, which is this thing, and just multiply it by delta k. So you go backwards, basically, from the way we just went. So you therefore get that um, the uh, probability density function of the random variable x, given that y is equal to some value k, evaluated at little x, what we got is that it would equal this joint PDF times delta x delta k. Oh, of course, we need to multiply that by delta x. So basically, that asks, what is the probability? So if I draw a picture, um, that asks, um, if you've got this random variable ascribing you values in this picture up here, uh, then that says, okay, take the pre-image of this value, uh, of, this of this line that y is equal to k, or this strip that y is equal to k uh, with width delta y, or delta k as we called it before. And then it says, okay, uh, you've removed that effectively. You've removed that over here. And you're now considering that as the whole probability space. 
and you've still got this random variable basically, but now the y value is fixed at this k value, so really it's just a uh, random variable in a, a univariate random variable which is ascribing you real values. And basically what you're doing is you've then said, take some little x in the real line, take an, a, a little interval of, delta, of, width, of length delta x, multiply the probability density function of this random variable, evaluate it at little x times delta x. That should give you the probability that you're within that little interval. And the way we can work that out, basically, is by taking the joint PDF of x and y, evaluating it at little x and little k, multiplying that by delta x, delta k. So basically what that does is it goes to R2. So if this is R2, it says here is the line that y is equal to k. Here is the value x. And basically what we're doing is we're taking, we imagine spumping up this into a tiny little interval of uh, thickness delta k. And then basically what we do is we find the area of that little, uh, sorry, we find the uh, probability of that little box, um, which is at x, k, basically. And this is of side lengths delta x, delta k. And the way that you find the probability of that little box is just taking the p joint PDF, evaluating that little x, little k, and timesing it by its area, which is delta x, delta k. And then what we do is we divide through by the probability of that entire pink strip, which is the probability of this pink probability space here, which is approximately this marginal PDF, the marginal PDF of y as a function of little y times delta k, which is the thickness of this strip. So that's basically finding the probability of that entire pink strip there. Okay, and then what we do is we just cancel off this delta k, we cancel off this delta x, and we get that the joint PDF, the joint PDF of big X as a function of, uh, given that y is equal to k, evaluated at little x, is equal to the joint PDF, evaluated at little x, little k, uh, divided by the marginal PDF, and that should be, I do apologise, that should be evaluated at little k, because we want the probability of this pink interval, which is the pink interval at the height y is equal to k, basically. Okay, uh, so now what we're going to use that is we're going to plug that into the formula for, uh, for conditional expectations. So remember, if we want to now take the conditional expected value of this random variable big X, conditional on this random variable big Y, equaling k, then what that means is you've pulled this uh, event that y is equal to k out of the entire probability space. You are now viewing that as a probability space in its own right. And you want to know what is the expected value of this random variable x um, where it's just now restricted onto this event that y is equal to k, basically. So the way you would work that out is you would integrate from negative infinity to infinity uh, the value, all real values times the conditional PDF, which is the PDF of this random variable on this probability space. So basically what we've done is we've altered this so that it's the probabilities, that it's the correct distribution basically for this new random variable on this event, on this new probability space, this pink probability space. So we'll stick that in. The uh, probability density function of the random variable x, given that y is equal to k, evaluated at little x, dx. And now we can just substitute it in and we'll get that it's the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x, uh, the, um, the uh, joint probability density function of big X, big Y, as evaluated at little x, little k, divided by the probability density function of big Y uh, as a function of k, as uh, evaluated at k, rather, dx. Okay, now something interesting happens in the case that the random variables big X and big Y are independent. Because if they're independent, we know that the, um, the definition of independent is that the joint probability density function is equal to the marginals multiplied by one another. So the marginal probability density function of the random variable big X multiplied by the marginal probability density function of the random variable big Y. And in that case, basically what you'll get is you'll replace this uh, probability density function, joint probability density function evaluated at little x, little k, with uh, the prob marginal of big X evaluated at little x times the marginal of big Y evaluated at k, and then the marginal of, of big Y evaluated at k will cancel with this one in the denominator, and what you'll get is that it's just the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x times the marginal PDF of x evaluated at little x dx, basically. So it's just the expected value of the marginal in that case. Um, so that's pretty much all I've had to say for this video.